The xenomorph and alien is one of the greatest sci-fi creatures of all time. I will hear no arguments about this. But does this alien biology make sense? Well, it kind of does. Now, before I get into this, there is now a very detailed lore around this creature, but I am only interested in what we learned from the first movie, from the original. Now, in this movie, we don't get a huge amount of information, but we do know a few things. It has a multi-stage life cycle, it has acidic blood, and it has an exoskeleton of polarized silicon. We are talking about a silicon-based life form with acidic blood that procreates like a parasite. The life cycle itself, perfectly plausible. The egg hatches into a face hugger, which implants an embryo into a host body that grows into a chest burster. This then emerges, to put it kindly, and grows into an adult xenomorph. Now, even without imagining hypothetical alien species, we can actually see similar behaviors to this in nature on Earth. Parasitoid wasps lay eggs on the surface of their host and the larvae then grow by feeding on the host. Hair worms. Oh, this is so upsetting. These guys grow inside insects and manipulate the host's behavior, compelling them to jump in water where the adult worm then emerges from the host. And guys, even fungi, yes, we're talking about The Last of Us. Cordyceps fungi infect insects, eventually taking over their bodies and altering their behavior for the fungi's benefit. The fungus grows inside the host until it erupts and releases its spores. Now, if you want to know more about this one, I have a much longer video on The Last of Us. So go check that out. So while we don't have anything exactly like the xenomorph process, it's completely plausible. So let's talk silicon with acidic blood. <laughs> because this definitely requires an entirely different environment than Earth. You see, silicon is a good candidate for speculative biochemistries. What I mean here is that it has some characteristics that makes it a potential for the foundation of alternative life forms, but we don't have any evidence for it. You see, we're carbon-based life forms. Now, silicon is directly below carbon on the periodic table, so it has similar electron configurations. This means that it can form bonds with other elements in similar ways to carbon, making it versatile. Now, another factor is that it's one of the most abundant elements in the universe, and it would likely be found on rocky planets. Now, silicon can form compounds similar to carbon, but it's less versatile in biological processes as we know them. Now, it is plausible, though, that in a high temperature or high pressure environment, silicon based chemistry could create life as we don't know it. Now, crucially, if silicon based life could evolve, it would not use water. Now, water is the critical solvent for life on Earth but silicon-based molecules are not soluble in water. Now, this solubility is needed for transport and reactivity of molecules in living organisms. But interestingly, this brings us to acidic blood. You see, life on Earth depends on water, which is fairly neutral. So internally, we have blood with a neutral to slightly alkaline pH level. There is no life on Earth with a pH level less than seven, which would be acidic. This is because cell function and enzymes are highly sensitive to pH. What we do have though, are many animals that can use acids for things like defense or digestion. Now ants produce formic acid that they can then spray in defense. Bombardier beetles eject a hot, noxious chemical spray from the tip of their abdomen that then produces a boiling acidic liquid projected towards attackers. So acidic blood in terms of Earth life? No. But alien life? Well, the pH of an organism's bodily fluids depends on biochemistry, which is influenced by its environment as well as the requirements for its metabolic processes. So if an alien developed in an environment with a different chemistry to us, for example, with high levels of sulfuric acid, like the clouds of Venus, it's way too freaking close to home for me, guys. But in an environment like this, a life could favor a more acidic pH level. Now, a more acidic fluid could also be evolved as a defense mechanism against pathogens or predators, or it could just be a better method of transport for minerals and substances that they need due to whatever environment they evolve in. What I'm saying is this, guys. 
silicon-based life forms with acidic blood that reproduce via host is plausible. I just really, really hope that they're like on the other side of the galaxy.